First, our own classroom of sorts, we call Lab 304. Over the next year, we'll examine scientific activity in West Virginia. We kicked off our series last week at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory in Pocahontas County. We learned about the giant Robert Seabird Telescope. Tonight, we continue our series in the shadows of that telescope. These are the giant telescopes at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory at Greenbank in Pocahontas County, West Virginia. You'd think you'd need a PhD in astrophysics to use one. Turns out all you need is a good idea. You could get time on the telescope. I could get time on the telescope. The telescopes are free to use. Uh, the way that happens is that uh, the astronomer or the scientist puts in a a project paper that says I'd like to do such and such and it goes through a peer review. Uh, you don't have to have a, uh, you know, a PhD to do it. If you have a project that is and, and can fulfill that project with the instrumentation that's available, uh, you could get time on the telescope as well. Who says you'd ever get anything from the government? If you're from West Virginia and you're in the ninth grade and you have an interest and aptitude in science, you may be able to spend a couple of weeks in the summer at Greenbank. The program is called the Governor's School for Math and Science. Since 2005, over 50 pre-high school students from each of the state's counties descend each summer upon the high-tech intergalactic radio wave listening post in bucolic Pocahontas County. The students went through a, a competitive selection process that started at their schools uh, their applications were then submitted to, uh, to the county level in, in all 55 counties in the state. Uh, and then at the county level they were evaluated and ranked. Uh, and then from there they went to a, a state level evaluation where uh, uh, officials from WVU and our two organizations, the, the uh, Radio Astronomy Observatory and the National Youth Science Foundation, got together and evaluated them again and, and pick the students to, uh, to participate. The teacher-pupil ratio here is very good. One teacher who is a real-life science teacher or a science-oriented college student for every four students. The goal of the summer science school is to stir an interest at an age when the students still have time to solve their education with math and science courses in high school. We hope that they share that enthusiasm with their fellow students because it's, it's a small population that we're able to have here every summer um, and we hope that multiplies when they go back home. The observatory schedules telescope time for the students in small groups, some of whom are awakened in the middle of the night to get a chance to spend an hour with a scientist in the control room for the Robert C. Byrd Green Bank Telescope. The mechanism here is to use radio astronomy research problems to encourage the students to learn the necessary math and science to answer these questions. They, they become inquisitive because they're posed new problems and they want to know what do they need to figure out to answer the questions. The students devise a question that could be answered collecting data with a giant telescope. They present their research results for critique at the end of the science camp. They participate for two weeks in the stuff of science, electronics, and astronomy. They're challenged to want to learn. It's not a, a boring classroom lecture, chalkboard type presentation. They get out and they get their hands dirty. They've been uh, one of the other activities that we do here are what we call directed studies, where uh, one group um, will be doing a stream study. They go and collect water samples down on Deer Creek and they bring it back and they look at those things and they learn how to describe uh, the water samples. And they're, they're actually building a formal report that they will present to the observatory that talks about the water quality of Deer Creek, which runs through the observatory property. And so, I mean, they're, they're starting to see that you know, science and math are not simply classroom activities, that they are real world activities. We just don't know anything about it. Uh, Why are you doing this? Um, we're trying to find out the type of macroinvertebrates that live in Deer Creek. Yeah, 
Yesterday we tested the cleanliness so of Deer Creek. Now we're going to test for the different animals. We want these kids to experience different types of sciences, let them know that there's so much out there to do rather than just the radio astronomy while they're here. Yes, they love it. They love to get in the water mostly and get wet and get dirty. <laughs> Near the end of the two-week school term, the student groups are each handed a box of colored chalk, pointed toward a section of concrete, and asked to come up with a single word to describe their experience at the Governor's School for Math and Science. If you're going to pursue or want to pursue a career in, in science or engineering or, or mathematics or medicine, you have to have the, the fundamental uh, background in your math courses and your science courses. If they wait until college and they haven't laid those foundations, the catch-up is, is so difficult uh, it becomes insurmountable for a lot of folks. Quite a classroom, this green bank. Scientists here have recently found carbon molecules in an envelope of gas surrounding an old star. The discovery is another step along a path that could lead us to understanding how we got here. Heady stuff for a new group of West Virginia high school students to consider as they sign up for fall class. This story was produced as part of our periodic series, Lab 304.